We're going to talk about in this lecture how to implement lists or some ways to implement lists. Um, so we're going to look at how to implement our own list collection. So the following operations are the things that are going to be common to all the lists. Okay, we're going to have remove first, which removes the first order uh, element. Remove last, which removes the last element. Um, we're going to have remove, which removes a particular element uh, first. Examines the first element of the list. Last, examines the rear of the list. Contains, determines if the list contains a particular element is empty and size um, which determines the the number of elements in the list all right so we have one operation that's particular to, uh, to ordered lists so it's add which adds an element to the list um we have operations that are particular to unordered lists which are add to front add to rear add after um so add to front adds to the front add to the rear adds to the rear list and then add after adds after a particular element that's already in the list so here is our list ADT. So we actually have several. We have our base list ADT, right? Which is remove first, remove last, remove first, last, is empty size iterator. Now we have um, inheriting from that base interface, we have uh, the ordered list interface and we have the unordered list ADT, okay? And so they have different functions depending on different class methods, depending on if we, uh, plan to have an ordered list or we plan to have an unordered list. All right, so we're going to have, there's three of these. There's the base, the ordered list, the unordered list. All right, so we're going to look. Um, so we have this public interface, list ADT extends iterable. Um, again, we'll talk about what this means in a, a bit. So we're going to have remove first. We're going to have um, remove last. Remove first, last, contains, is empty, size, um, iterator, which is a way to let us loop over the list. And again, we'll see this in a bit. Um, and then to string. Um, so we have the ordered list ADT that defines another element, which is the add element, which adds a, a specific element to, to the list in the proper location. So this is going to put it in where it's supposed to be because it's an ordered list. Okay as opposed to an unordered list. So um, now for the unordered list, we have add to front, add to rear, and then add after. So the reason that we really can't mix these things, if you think about it, is so we have these base functions um, that let us remove things. So remove first, remove last. We remove the first element, remove the last element, remove the, remove the teeth element. None of those functions will violate the order, right? Um, None of those will violate. So let's say we have an ordered list. None of those functions violate the order. If we move the first thing, it, it just shifts it down one. The last thing, the order is still preserved. Remove a particular element. It doesn't It doesn't affect the order, first, last, et cetera, et cetera. None of these things affect the order. So they're fine to be in the ordered list ADT as well. They don't affect the order. They're just generic things that we can do. Um, and then we have this function add that adds, but adds in the proper place. So let's say we're doing an, if we had an owner list that doesn't make any sense because we just call add. Where is it going to add? It, it, it has no default order, no default location for that thing to be added. So we separate these things out because these functions don't make sense. Similar, similarly, um, we can't have add to front, right? with an ordered list because there's an implied, there's an order, there's a set order for the elements in the list. And if we just forcibly add one to the front, then we're gonna violate the order, right? So we need to split these things out and same thing for add to rear and add after. They're gonna break the ordering of the list if it's an ordered list. So these things must be split out into their own interface. So we have the base that everything shares. Then we have the two, um, the two subclasses um, ordered and unordered that have their own special things that can't coexist, basically. They, have, they need to be spread out because they can't coexist. All right, so if we implement a list with an array, um, since the elements can be added anywhere in the list, um, shifting things cannot be avoided, right? Um, so we can just have a straightforward implementation. We can just put zero, one, two, three, four, whatever. Um, Again, this goes back, you start thinking about what's the order of inserts. You're going to have to do shifts within, there's a trade-off. You got to do shifts with an array. You got to do searches with a list. Um, in the end, they both end up being order in, unless you're inserting them on the front or the back. 
Um, so yeah, think about these things. And then with the array, sometimes if you insert on the back, which is the zeroth element, then you have to shift. So think about these things are sometimes not so straightforward with the array implementation or list implementations. So here is our array list, uh, implements the list ADT and it's iterable. Um, we have a default capacity. We have this, uh, we define this not found to be negative one, which you saw in the, uh, you saw in the in the earlier code that we're looking at that if you do a if you do a find and it's not or you, you do like a find and you ask for the location it's not found then um, it's going to return negative one so we have a, an int which is the rear uh, we have our list which is our array it's the, it's our it's our generic array um, and then we have our mod count which we'll talk about in a sec um, so. There's our array constructors, our initial capacity instructors. Um, and it's set equal to, uh, sorry, this fireworks outside is distracting me. <laughs> so the mod count set equal to zero. Um, all right, so here we have the remove, we have a T result, we have a, our index that we're gonna, if we do a find, we're gonna find a thing that we're gonna remove. Um, if it's not found, which means we got a, a negative one, then we're gonna throw an exception, element not found. Um, the result is gonna be the array index. Um, we're gonna shift the appropriate elements around. Um, we're going to set the end of the list to null because remember, we're gonna shift everything down um, and we're going to, so we need to set that last one to null, right? Otherwise it's going to be just sort of sitting there. And then we increment the mod count. Um, we have our Boolean contains, which really just is the find. Um, if it's found, then it, uh, it, it returns true. If it's not, then it returns false. So we have our find, which again, um, the only way that we can uh, find things in this list is just by searching through it sequentially. So we're going to start. Um, we're going to start with scan equals zero. And we're going to keep going. We're going to increment scan. If we find it, we'll return the scan, which is the current index that we're searching for. Um, if not, we're going to increment it. So we're just searching through this thing linearly to to try to find um, the element that we're looking for, the target. We have our add function. Our add function. Is gonna turn is gonna um, <clears throat> so if you're gonna compare things if you're gonna sort things if it's gonna be in some sorted order um, then the element needs to implement comparable right in Java you have to be able to compare is one bigger than the other um, so and we have the possibility that we're gonna need to um, we're gonna to need to expand the capacity if the size is equal to the list length, and we're gonna add something, we have to expand capacity. We saw this with all of our array implementations. Um, so we're gonna to try to find the insert location. So we're gonna do compare um, with what we're currently looking for. We're gonna compare the thing that we're searching for um, to the thing that we're looking for, or, or to, to the list elements as we're going through. And we're gonna basically this is this is searching through so we can have keep them in some order whatever our order is defined to be on this list via the comparable implementation the, the comparable interface um we're gonna search until it's um in the right spot right so now we're gonna shift everything in the nest this, this little for loop this is gonna shift everything up one so we can do the insert and then we're gonna do the insert and we're gonna increment the rear and the mod count um all right, so here is the add after function. So we have an element T and a target T. So again, we're gonna add something. We're gonna to have to check the capacity to see if it uh, needs to be incre increased. We're gonna search through and try to find um, the target. And remember, this is not searching for, um, this is not searching for, um, we're not trying to put things in order. We're, we're searching for a particular thing that we're going to add after. So we're going to search through here and we're going to try to find it. And if we don't find it, we're going to toss, we're going to throw an exception. Um, 
We're going to shift all the elements up one. And then we're going to insert the element in the new location, right? So we find it, a particular element, scan. We're going to increment the scan because we're going to insert after. So we're going to do the one, one in front of where we found it. We're going to do the insert, increment the rear because we've shifted everything up one. And then we're going to increment this mod count. Um, so another way to implement these things is to implement them with links. So we can use a classic linked list. Um, we look, we've seen the linear node class a few times. We've already looked at it. Um, we're going to have a head and tail reference both, as well as an integer count to keep track of um, how many things are in the list. Oops, sorry, backwards, not forwards. Um, so here we have, um, again, our um, our list T, which implements the list ADT and also iterable. I don't know why they stick this in there. Um, I, I assumed it just because it needs to be that way for certain Java. A list is supposed to impl uh, work in a certain way in Java. It has certain properties, like you should be able to iterate over it. And again, we'll talk about what iterate means in the next chapter. But because of that, they're going to implement the iterable interface, even though we're not actually going to be iterable yet because we haven't talked about iterators yet. Um, all right, so we got count, head, tail, linear node, references, and then we got this mod count again. Um, so the mod count's just the number of times it's been changed. It's I don't even know why they keep this in here, actually. But we have our count equal to zero. We have our head, tail. We set them all to null. That's what we do with a linked list, right? Everything is null. Um, remove an element is going to throw an empty collection exception if this thing or an element found not not found exception if it does not exist it's going to it can throw if it doesn't exist or it's not found or uh, sorry if the collection is empty or it's not found it's going to throw one of these exceptions right so here we say if it's empty we're going to throw this um now we're going to search we're going to make this boolean we're going to search through uh linear t previous equals null linear t current equals head um, so while current's not equal to null and not found um, means that, so this is the thing, this is our, this is, this is basically our reference that we're using to loop, loop through the list. So it's a little weird to insert in a list or to remove from a list. So when you remove from a list, and you'll, you'll have to think about this for a second, but when you remove from a list, you actually need the element before the element that you're going to remove, Right. Because you need to set, if you're going to take it out, the element before the element that you're going to remove has a reference to the element that you're about to remove. And you need to change that reference and make it point to the thing after the element that you're going to remove. And so you actually need a reference to the thing that you're going to remove and to the thing before the thing that you're going to remove. Okay? And if you have a different type of list, if you had a doubly linked list, you would need to do that. Um, but in this case, we have a singly linked list and we're going to have to do this. So we're going to keep this previous reference and we're going to set it equal to null. And you're going to see that what we're going to do is we're going to say while the current is not equal to null. So remember the list is null terminated. So the last element is null. That means we've reached into the list and not found, meaning that we haven't found what we're looking for. So if we find it, we're going to get the element or if we find it, we're going to set the found equal to true. And basically, we're done with the loop, right? We're not going to execute this. We're going to break out. Found is going to be true. And we're good to go. All right. Else, we're going to set the previous equals to the current. So the new previous is the old current. And we're going to set the new current equals to current.next. So what we're doing here is we're keeping track of, we have the current, which is the element that we're looking at now. And we have the prev, the previous element that we're using, that we're going to use when we find it to actually remove it. And let's look at the next thing and we can see this. So if it's not found, we're going to throw this exception. Um, so if the size is one, this is a special case we have to take care of. Um, we're going to set the head, the tail, everything null because we removed the only thing in the list. Um, if current equals the head, this is a special case we have to take care of. Um, in this case, we just say head equals current dot next. So we delete the head and that's, um, that's all we need to do. If it equals the tail, then 
we say tail equals previous. So we're going to remember, we got that previous reference. We're going to say the tail, which was the last element. That's our pointer to the last element in the list. So if it reaches the last element, we're going to pull that back to the previous one. So we're going to set it equal to the previous one, element in the list, which is what we've kept that previous reference pointing to, right? And we're going to set tail dot, uh, we're going to say tail dot set next equals null. So we're going to set the next thing in the list to equal to equal null. So now our we have our new tail and it's null and the previous tail has been deleted. All right. So that's a special case where it's the tail. If it's in the middle, it's 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 actually a little simpler. If it's in the middle, all we have to do because we've kept that previous reference, right? So if we don't keep the previous reference and we get to a particular one, let's say we're incrementing current and we find it, how do we remove it? There's no way, right? Because to remove it, we have to have the previous reference, which means we'd have to go back through and then loop through again, which is not what we want to do. So we're going to keep the current and then the previous, which is the one before it, so that when the current is the one that we need to remove, we just say previous.setNext is equal to current.setNext, or get next. So basically, we're going to set the current is the one we're going to remove, and the next is the next element after the current one. So we're going to set the next element of the previous element, the next reference of the previous element to equal the next reference of the current element. And that is going to delete it. Draw a picture and 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 look at it and you'll see that this actually works, okay? Um, so we're gonna decrement the count, we're gonna increment the mod count, um, and then you're gonna return current.getElement. All right, so that is the end of our presentation on uh, on lists. I know that lists can be a little confusing, especially the operations. I'll, I'll be honest with you, when you're writing the code for this, um, you're gonna find that a you're gonna make a lot of mistakes with those references, um, getting them pointing to the right things, accidentally you know pointing it at the wrong thing or doing it in the wrong order. You're gonna have to practice this a bit. It's gonna take a little bit of of, of thought and just just working with it. I mean. I remember spending hours debugging some of my first linked list code in Pascal of all languages. <laughs> That's just how it's going to be. So, you know, buckle up and get ready. Trees are going to be worse. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody, and have a good have a good afternoon.